In the last two lessons, we explored how to make different types of filters using only resistors, capacitors, and inductors. These types of filters are known as passive filters because they do not inject any extra power into the signal as it passes through the filter. In this lesson, we will explore what are called active filter circuits. Active filters can inject power into the signal, making sure that there is no signal loss through the filter, something that a passive filter can't offer. In addition, active filters can also be designed to be more precise in what frequencies they are filtering. A very common part that is used when building active filter circuits is the op-amp, and you can see many different examples of its usage as a filter on your screen. To understand how a basic active filter works, we'll start by looking at the low-pass filter circuit. An active low-pass filter circuit has a capacitor connecting from the inverting pin of an op-amp and to the output of that op-amp. Two resistors are also placed, and they have the same value, which will keep input signals and output signals at the same power levels. The formula to know where the cutoff frequency is for this active low-pass filter looks like this. And the graph that shows which filters will make it through the filter unaltered will actually look strikingly similar, as you can see. The second circuit to know about is the active high-pass filter. This filter places a capacitor before the inverting input of the op-amp. The frequency cutoff formula is the same as the low-pass filter. However, things are reversed when we look at the graph of frequencies. Frequencies lower than the cutoff point will have very low power going through the filter, but all higher frequencies pass through unchanged. The last circuit that we'll look at is the active bandpass filter. This is actually just a combination of a low pass and a high pass filter. The resulting output is a bandpass just like we saw in the last lesson with RLC circuits. A bandpass filter means that there is a lower and upper cutoff frequency and that only the frequencies between those two cutoff points will pass through the filter unchanged. Now let's put this new knowledge to work and build some active filters with op-amps. For this circuit, we'll build a low-pass filter, a high-pass filter, and a buffer to drive the output speaker. To build this circuit, we'll need a breadboard, the jumper wire kit, and from the analog parts kit, the stereo cable with tinned wires, two 9 volt battery connectors, the audio jack breakout board, three 741 op amps, a 1 microfarad capacitor, a 10 nanofarad capacitor, four 100 ohm resistors, two 10 kilo ohm resistors, and finally five capacitors, 10 and 100 nanofarad, one 10 and 100 microfarad. This circuit is the most difficult circuit to build in this course. So like the other lessons, we'll go step by step building the circuit so that you can follow along and build it correctly with us. With the circuit built up, we're going to test it by playing a song on a laptop. The stereo cable will allow us to connect the audio signal to our filters and the audio jack breakout board 
will let us plug in the filtered output signal to a set of speakers. For the first part of the experiment, we will vary the capacitor value of the high pass filter. This should result in lower frequencies of the music being filtered out as the capacitance in the high pass filter is decreased. Then, finally, with the 10 and 100 nanofarad capacitors, only the highest pitched notes of the song can be heard. Everything else is filtered out. Second, let's vary the capacitor value of the low pass filter. This should result in higher frequencies of the music being filtered out as the capacitance in the low pass filter is increased. This time, with the 10 and 100 microfarad capacitors, only the lowest pitched notes of the song can be heard. So probably by now, you have noticed that the purpose of this experiment is to show you how the capacitor value of the high pass and low pass filters can alter the cutoff frequency of each filter and therefore change its effect on an input signal. Active filters are used all over the place in audio circuits, wireless receivers and transmitters, and video circuits. Oftentimes, these active filters are even integrated into the IC silicon to save space for compact devices like cell phones or GPS units. All parts in this online course we're provided by the Gadgetory. Visit them at gadgetory.com slash pyroedu. Now that we have had a good introduction to the different types of filters out there, let's take a look at the other side of things and see how to build some amplifiers.